According to the Wikipedia article about the right to know, in the context of the United States workplace and community environmental law, is a legal principle that the individual has the right to know the chemicals to which they may be exposed in their daily living. It is embodied in federal law in the United States as well as in local laws in several states. The right to know laws take two forms, community right to know and workplace right to know. Each grants certain rights to those groups. The right to know was a movement made popular by Rachel Carson with her book, Silent Spring. Silent Spring was published in 1962. The book documented the trimental effects of the environment, particularly on birds, of the indiscriminate use of pesticides. Sometime later, in 1970, the group OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, was created. But what does all this have to do with education? Well, I could argue the idea that in recent times, maybe in the past 10, 15 years or so, there have been restrictions on what cleaning supplies janitors can use, teachers can use. Like in my science class, my teacher had to go from things with ammonia that could be harmful to students to something like Fantastic, which is environmentally safe and can clean and not harm the students. But I would like to add that OSHA and various other right to know concepts are about teachers needing to know the risks of dealing with certain students. While working in the special ed field, as well as other classrooms, we've dealt with students with emotional and behavioral disorders, with autism spectrum disorders, and that has led us to being hit, kicked, bit, spit on. Um, others where you have to change diapers and that sort of thing, you have to deal with fecal matter. Not a pleasant topic of discussion. But this health and wellness is not what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about the right to know is also known the as of Information Act. Now, the article that I wanted to talk about that pertains to this issue is Fight over accessing teacher ratings. The article talks about raw numbers showing how many teachers are receiving each rating. The members of the town are not going to know which teacher is receiving which rating, but the numbers are out there and parents don't want to send their students to possibly a teacher who is rating. This is below a call. scary issue because you're out of options if you don't know what teacher is rated low and as a teacher you feel incriminated by having this information out there or let's say it was a bad quarter and you're really a great educator there's a lot of factors maybe the students don't want to learn even engagement is part of the job description but it's hard to engage everyone. It's hard when various factors play into your job title. You can try as much as you want, but results speak for themselves. And if you're basing a teacher rating score on the scores of your students, it doesn't seem very fair to me. Let's look into the freedom of information. This is the free speech flag. Freedom of Information Freedom of Information is an extension of the freedom of speech, a fundamental human right recognized in international law, also known as freedom of expression. This means that the protection of freedom of speech as a right includes not only the content but also the means of expression. Oral, writing, print, internet, 
and art. Freedom of information also refers to the right to privacy in the context of the internet and information technology. As with the right to freedom of expression, the right to privacy is a recognized human right and freedom of information acts as an extension to this right. According to the website for International Right to Know Day on September 28th, the right to access information is an important human right necessary for enjoyment of other human rights. The right to information is essential for a transparent and accountable government. The right to access information makes possible the public involvement in formulating social policies and in the decision-making processes of governance. The right to information can only be effective, exercised, and implemented on the basis of laws regulating the right in accordance with international standards. Let's start a recent history lesson with the shooting of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Montana. Now, this issue brought about the idea of using video cameras on police officers to ensure that they have accountability for their actions. This article The Case for Cop and Teacher Cams, written by Rayan Salam, talks just about that idea, adding video cameras, body cameras to police officers and teachers to ensure that they have accountability for their own actions. Our capacity to remember past events is notoriously faulty. There is a universal human tendency to fixate on some things while neglecting others. So having these cameras is his suggestion for being able to put a stop fault in those type of things. However, he mentions some statistics that are kind of alarming when it comes to racial issues of teachers. He says, Public school teachers and administrators are the most obvious example for having power and maybe no accountability for that power. Video recordings could determine whether teachers are systematically biasing against black students if they are disciplining students in an entirely race neutral way or if the truth is somewhere in between. Investigators could identify patterns that could help inform how teachers are trained to manage their classrooms. Now, I starred a very important part of the article. What's more, video recordings could allow teachers to evaluate their progress. That talks about the previous article I mentioned and to share their experiences with other teachers who can help them think through how to improve their performance. When my sister was in her practicum to become a certified teacher, she was required to videotape herself in some teaching scenarios. And this would help her become a better teacher. You may have noticed in some of my videos that I do um and ah a lot. I try to edit these out in the editing phase, but teachers are off the cuff. If you don't know your content, you may um and ah, and those were some of my sister's faults. But in practicing on your faults, you can become better. Now, the teacher cams, I'm still leery about this idea. I don't like it, and all teachers all students would have to have their guardians sign off on this policy. 
It's funny, in the same exact page of the Hartford Current on December 6, 2014, two different opinion pieces were published about the idea of having police body cameras. The first, send funds for body cameras, applauds President Obama for commending Congress for $75 million in matching funds to help uh, buy 50,000 body cameras for local police departments. But in the lower article, Body Cameras Won't Work, was an article written by Justin Hansford, who is a human rights activist and lawyer professor at St. Louis University School of Law. And in this article, it states that the body cameras will not work because officers are rarely charged in these kind of instances, whether there's video evidence or not. The cameras will simply lull the country into believing that we can solve these problems of racial profiling and police violence without holding police accountable for their actions. The state excessive force law makes criminal conviction of police officers for murder almost impossible. A police officer has nothing to lose by killing unarmed black men. That's what this lawyer professor said. Now, we're going to take the idea of body cams for police officers and put them on school officials and teachers. What happens when they're dealing with a difficult student who's hurting other students or hurting themselves or hurting the teacher? Are they allowed to prevent this hurt from happening? When working as a paraeducator in Vernon, I had a student who would repeatedly hit himself in the head for every wrong answer he gave, every bad behavior choice he made. And I would have to place my hands between his hands and his forehead or his forehead and a wall. Another incident where students go off the wall, I needed to use my physical management training 